Well, as you no doubt know, here at ABC7, we're committed to building a better Bay Area, and part of that pledge includes bringing you stories about our climate and environment, and you've probably seen the beautiful pictures of those super blooms mm -hmm. erupting all around California. Yeah, understanding the cycles of flowers and the species that depend on them could be critical for our planet. ABC7 News anchor Dan Ashley is back now from the newsroom with a look at a local effort. Dan? Yeah, Kristen Lair, it's really interesting. Uh, one local research center is working right now not on a remote hillside, as you might imagine, but on a rooftop in the middle of San Francisco. In springtime, the California Academy of Sciences living roof is alive with swaying grass and blooming flowers. But these days, the iconic dome in San Francisco's Golden Gate Park is also working overtime as a living laboratory. So this is our malaise trap. There's some, a bunch of bugs that have just come into the top of the trap. Chris Grinter is the collection manager of entomology and a self-described bug guy. The trap he's checking is part of a multi-site project that could help researchers better understand the evolution and biodiversity of insects. First, the insects captured in the trap are sent off to the lab where teams will sequence their DNA for a project funded by the California Institute of Biodiversity. We're going to be doing a lot of in-house genomic research on them here. So we're trying to build a DNA library of California insects. So this is our cyclone sampler. Which is he says another set of samples is being collected for a separate project based at the University of Helsinki called LifePlan. Its goal, to document species and biodiversity across the globe. We're one of 81 different sites around the world that's doing this exact same monitoring protocol. So we're going to be having a really comprehensive data set from all over these global um, remote locations that are going to be able to be compared for generations to come. They need to crawl down into the tube in order to get the nectar. And it's an interesting time to study bugs. It's also a fascinating year to study their ecosystem, including plants and flowers. Assistant botany curator Sarah Jacobs says the current super blooms popping up around California are only part of a complicated and diverse environment. The cool thing about super blooms is that we will see some species explode, whereas other species might not bloom as 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 big or as um, with as many individuals. And so we have that opportunity to see how that affects the pollinators. She says it's even possible that the pollinators may need time to catch up with the increase in blooming flowers. And documenting these potential fluctuations is another benefit of this ongoing research. Insects rely on plants as a food source, habitat to uh, raise their young. And with climate change introducing new pressures, researchers say it's even more important to understand the critical relationships that affect all of the species on our entire planet. Pieces of a puzzle being gathered on a sunny rooftop in the middle of San Francisco. And one example to note here, Academy researchers say they're seeing more invasive species and that roughly 30% of the specimens captured in their rooftop traps are not originally native to North America. So it is really fascinating work being done again collectively around the world too. Uh, Kristen, Larry, interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, we're going to have more blooming here given the rain that we're having. So, I know. so the pollinators will be happy, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> right, Larry.